in a social setting, I remember feeling all by myself. And I remember literally an event in the fourth grade, though, where we were uh, in, uh, we were talking about dinosaurs. And so everybody started with this thing, well, if I was a dinosaur, I'd be or whatever. And I was like, well, if I was a dinosaur, I'd be a brontosaurus because that was kind of like the biggest, fattest looking dinosaur or whatever to me. And everybody laughed. Everybody laughed. And they, it felt like, but not in a way that I felt was accusing or whatever, but it was a way that they accepted me in that. And there began this moment of this you know, self-depreciating thing where I was like, man, if I beat them to the punch of what I think they're thinking of, if I say it, before I before what I feel like they're thinking, you know, before they have time to to think it for very long or whatever, then man, that's that was close enough to acceptance for me, man, you know, which is just a, a really weird and terrible place to be if you really think about it. And so um, I it even dawned on me with Big Daddy Weave, that's even sort of like it, my nicknames growing up. Hey, Big Daddy, you know, and it was just like lovingly, you know, they have been had given these nicknames you know it's like it was not out of hate or anything like that it was but it was still all about this image thing that never being good enough because I was never you know happy with me the first time we were touring with Mark Schultz um, and uh, they told me that hey because of where the set is and all that stuff you need to share about World Vision um, so I found that out the day of that show and I almost hyperventilated because I was going to have to not just sing my songs to Jesus, you know what I mean? I was going to have to talk to the people. I mean, it's for some reason, the talking between it would always just become this self-deprecating shtick, you know what I mean? And that would be, that was my defense mechanism because what I was dealing with the entire time I was up there is like, oh my gosh, man, I don't want to, like... They can't, man, I got to beat them to the punch because they surely are just thinking I'm the hugest joke or whatever, you know? And so, because that's what I'm believing that I am. Literally, over just the past couple of years, man, um, you know, this battle with my weight has always been a thing. And so, I've always, you know, uh, we had a thing in 09 where we had this big campaign where literally, like, I, I lost almost 90 pounds. But the whole idea was like, lose 90 pounds in 09. And so, we did this this whole campaign. And I lost 84 pounds that year. And man, I, that just was not good enough for me because I missed it by six pounds. I couldn't even see all the progress that I had made, man. I couldn't even be thankful for all those things. And I just began this slow descent, man, back to where I came from and just, uh, and just sort of hating on myself, man, not accepting myself, not being happy with myself, man. And I remember being in my garage, which is where I work out down there, and uh, just like literally sitting on the floor, just being like, God, I, I just am not happy with me, you know? And then the Lord was like, in my heart, he was like, why don't you let me tell you what I think about you, you know? And he did. He goes, I love the way that you smile. And I love that, you know, your heart for people. And I love, and he just began to remind me of all these things about myself. And I just was a wreck, man, in the garage, hearing this from God, man, in my heart, you know? That makes all the difference. We were coming on a time when uh, we were going to have to go, this, this is the worst day in a fat guy's life, man, in the music industry anyway, is that, you know, we had photo shoots. So they're going to put you in a lot of weird clothes that you never would have picked off the shelf. You know, I'm like a t-shirt and jeans guy, you know what I mean? It's like, and so I'm, I'm hating this. I'm looking in the mirror and I'm hating what I'm seeing and all of this kind of stuff. And I'm going, oh man, how am I going to do this? And the Lord reminds me again and he says, he says, hey, you know what I see in that mirror right there? Let me tell you what I see. He goes, look, at the, look in there. Let me tell you what that is. You know what that is? He said, that is mine. He says, you are mine. That makes all the difference in the world. Because I thought that I never really had a pride problem in my life because what I thought humility was, was self-deprecation. And that is not... That really is pride. I call it backdoor pride, you know. Uh, what humility is, is simply being willing to agree with what God says about anything. And so for me that day, he says, you are mine. You belong to me. You are worth it. Not because of your track record, but because of the blood of Jesus Christ, man. You, Mike Weaver, are redeemed, you know. And that changes everything. That changes everything. And so now, 
I endeavor to learn how to walk in that, you know, to walk in that, you know, maybe, maybe we'll beat the weight struggle at some point or, you know, the eating thing, maybe not. But either way, when I look in the mirror, what I need to know is that I see what I see belongs to him, man. I'm redeemed because of who he is, man.